What's happening everybody? You've been waiting, you've been asking, diligently watching every week. So I thought I'd open up the doors, the gates, if you will, and let you into Camp Kennan for our second tour. Show you what's going on, what's new, and you can revisit some of your favorite pals of mine. See you in a bit. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Ten. So if you guys were here to see me in real life, in person, the first animals you'd see on the tour would be the B group of the Sulcatas. This is a young group I put together. We have some younger females. We got a big boy named Hercules right here who's an awesome tortoise. I actually got him from a nice gentleman who lived in Boca Raton, Florida. Could no longer keep him and he was just such a beautiful, big, lovely tortoise that I grabbed him up. And then the others are made up. We've got a 3.7. That means three males to seven females in here. And right now, I have to be honest with you folks. You might hear me complain about this. You'll notice I'm wearing my jacket. It's actually freezing. It's only like 68 degrees here today, which is pretty much Arctic Circle temperatures if you're a thin-blooded guy like me. So you'll notice that many of the tortoises are gonna actually be in their small winter quarters because as we've seen in the past videos, the season is that I have to wrangle all these guys and get them in their sheds at night. Uh, not an easy thing to do and certainly not easy when I'm traveling and the missus has to do all the work. So I'm trying to help her out. So, you know, it's a little stressful this time of year. However, many people come to Florida and they think this is the perfect weather. But if you're a reptile lover, you want it warm. Uh, and I think I'm part reptile nowadays anyway because I like it warm too. You know, I gotta bask for a couple hours just to get psyched up. So, the sulcatas can walk all through here. We got the pond, but let's step on over. We'll go into the radiated enclosure. Uh, these guys are out and about. We got a young one right now. I really love these tortoises. Uh, look at this, really pretty animal. Just getting a little bit of some food and then if we move over here, let's go see the bigger one. Look at that. They're warming up, it's kind of early still. They're spreading out, really getting warmed up. They've eaten all the grass out here. I got to replant. Uh, it's a challenge keeping the grass going with these guys because they're such ferocious herbivores, if that makes sense. They really enjoy grazing. So these guys are, doing their thing. Uh, we have nine here, uh, really beautiful animals. I'm fostering them and we got two babies already, which is a big deal for me because this is a bucket list species. Um, they're, as you know, or maybe you don't know, they're actually quite endangered. They're from Madagascar. Uh, we do have a nice sized population in the United States and that's fantastic because in Madagascar, these animals are being just poached out of the wild and sold over to China as pets. Uh, so we are very fortunate to have a nice stable colony here in the United States that we can then legally sell captive animals, which is the best thing to do. Never take from the wild. We got a mango tree. I got five mango trees on the property. Uh, that's good for some of the fruit eating tortoises and really good for me because I love mangoes. Oh, look who's out. Some of the leopards. Again, leopards are incredible grazers. These guys go to town. I put up these little fences to keep them away from the cactus because I want to get these cactus established. We got hibiscus leaves and flowers. We've got some leopard tortoise. These are the Pardalis babcocci. Uh, there's two subspecies. Some scientists think it's actually one species uh, that they're no longer subspecific, but we'll just call them the uh, Pardalis babcocci. And then there's Pardalis pardalis, which is the larger usually the larger leopard tortoises. Uh, this uh, was where we used to keep the star tortoises. I no longer work with them. They just don't really like the humidity. So they have been given to a gentleman who's keeping them in a really cool indoor area. So I'm happy for that because if I can't keep animals alive or happy here, then I don't want them. Uh, it's, it's not good for me or the animal. I stress out if animals get sick. We're trying to keep animals at Camp Kennan that, that flourish, that do well. I'll tell you what, let's go through. It's gonna be a little bit of a shock, so you might wanna pull off your sunglasses because we're just gonna peek in here. Let's see if we have enough light. Uh, there's gonna be a little adjustment, okay? So I know my camera guy's gonna freak out when we walk in here, but I know you guys don't mind, so just bear with the camera. Uh, 
getting ready, okay? We're gonna come in. Some of you may have already seen this, but this is where every night I put all the animals away. The leopard tortoises have to come in. I've got a dehumidifier going to kind of keep it. it. It does two things. It takes a lot of moisture out of the air, and it also heats the air, so it's pretty good. It keeps it nice and warm in here for these guys. Never gets below 70 degrees inside of here. All right, we're gonna walk back out. Let's keep going, guys. Ah, yes, which direction to go? Well, we got a few little Herman's tortoise right here. And like I said, it's been cold the last couple days, so a few of them, check this out. The Herman's tortoises can take the cold, but look at what they do. They burrow down. So there's tortoises in there, and then during the evening, they burrow down more, and I'll come around and I cover them up. I just cover them up to you know, help insulate them from any of the uh, cool temps that we might be experiencing here in Florida. But these guys do very well. Let's leave that off because I think they're waking up because it's getting a little bit warmer here in, as we move into the afternoon. Come on guys, let's go over and see the original group of sulcatas that I keep. And we've done a lot of videos with the sulcatas. Oh, everyone's out, check it out. So they have you know, the whole backyard, which you guys have seen. Uh, but right now they're sunbathing. They've walked from their barn, which is heated, of course, all the way to here. And what, look at this, this is so cool. I love seeing them just kind of chilling out, sunbathing, being tortoises. Uh, yes, it's a little bit of a bummer because they have a smaller area, but um, you know what? It's about function and the function is to keep them healthy. So if they got to spend a few days in a small area, so be it. These guys are going to live a real long time. A week in a small area is not going to hurt them. I just slide open the doors and they're going to get back to work grazing on all that grass out there. Let's see, let's go over here. I'm gonna do something completely different, something I did not do in the first tour, and I'm gonna tell you why. I do have snakes, I'm gonna show you the snakes. Um, the thing about the snakes is they're in vision cages, it's not the most extravagant thing. I keep them simply right now. We're actually gonna be building really cool outdoor enclosures for my snakes, because I personally don't keep a lot of snakes, because for me, I get bummed out. Um, I know snakes like tight little spots and so on, but for me, I love to see animals in nature. But so many of you have asked if I keep snakes and I'm gonna show you some of my snakes right now. It's, it's a functional room, it's not the prettiest room, and that's why, you know, I'm not really a, a loon about. There is Princess Buttercup, that is my albino Burmese python. And, you know, again, I keep her just simply Construction paper uh, as a substrate. It's easy to clean. She's got her water. I do pull her out and I play with her uh, Make sure she can stretch out. She's always involved in my educational stuff with my virtual safaris You can check out on campkennon.com if you're an educator I can come right into your classroom and do a live presentation, which is really fun. So that's one of my uh, Pals that comes out and does that we have a, a young Red-tailed boa here. Most of my snakes are actually rescues from bush wildlife. These are snakes that people could no longer care for. They got dumped at the sanctuary. This was just a pretty little, little boa. Oh, it's not happy either. It's hissing at me. Oh, don't be mad. This is just a little boa. And this animal, actually, I'm in the process of fattening up. It's a little thin to me, uh, but it was starting to be neglected. And look at this pretty snake. Just a pretty red tail, nice little Colombian. Um, I love boas. I just think they're a cool snake. Uh, so we rescued it. I haven't probed it, don't know if it's a male or a female, but it's a cool snake. So there is Colombian red tail, but let's go ahead and put this little guy back. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come down. There you go. Now this is what I really love to see animals in. If you're gonna do an enclosure, go big. So we're gonna go see Slinky. Uh, here is Slink's. Now Slink was just out sunbathing. Hey bud, what kind of mood you in? Come here Slink, come here. Um, I like to not, you know, get all up in Slinky's space, but I like to let Slinky come to me. Um, love this animal. It's doing so well out here. Um, but basically look at, uh, this is what's so cool about monitors. Monitors are so inquisitive um, and they really perk up 
just wants to see what's going on uh, and gives you that puffed up float. Oh, that really hurt, Slinky. That really hurt. I love getting my love whips from Slinky. I guess she's into S&M. Ouch. Mm. Let's go see Guapo. He's more friendly. Have fun, Slink. We'll give you your space. So over here is Senor Guapo. You guys know Guapo and his girlfriend Lola. There he is. Uh, and again, guys, got to remind you, um, it has been really cold. So all of the uh, shelters you see here at Camp Kennan are heated. Now, I know some of you are from northern climates, and uh, you may think 68 is just fantastic weather. But for our tropical species like the Cyclora iguana, uh, you really have to be careful not to get these guys uh, cool. Good old Guapo here and his girlfriend Lola, who must still be in on the uh, heat pad, have lived in here for going on 12 years. And they started out as little hatchlings, and they've been living in here since they were tiny. So it's really cool uh, to see animals grow into their environment. They really feel at home. And uh, I myself have grown into this environment, man. I've been here myself 12 years, and I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. This place is such a part of me. Uh, it's not the biggest place. There are bigger facilities. But I think um, utilizing the space you have and keeping a managed population of animals that doesn't stress you out uh, is, is key for really enjoying them and for doing good with them as well. They're great animals and um, it's really amazing to learn about them. And I feel that when we get young people that may be watching this, I think this is the whole key. Get young people excited about these animals uh, and it really broadens the world. So much of my worldview has been shaped by, you know, learning about reptiles and then learning Latin and then learning about the plants they eat. So you become a botanist and then you become uh, to find out what other animals live in the ecosystem. So it's really fantastic. And I can go on and on and on. But right now, let's see, because Lola wants to come out. Come here, Lola. What's up? See how inquisitive my animals are? She just wants to see what's going on. Come here, girl. Come on and say hello. She actually runs the show in here. Come here. Come here. They're sick. Is that cool? And again, I really think the reason these animals behave this way is because they have the space to be healthy. Uh, health isn't just physical. It's also mental. And you may think reptiles have pea brains, but hey, let's give those brains as much stimulation as possible. Oh, she's good and warm right now. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? That's Lola. She's a good girl. Pretty girl. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in here. And it was really cool watching these two grow up. And they're only 12. Cyclora can live 30 to 40 years, sometimes even more. So we're going to do our best to keep them happy and healthy. You want to go check out some more stuff? Let's do it. See you later, baby. She's a pretty girl. All right, time now for the cherry heads. And this particular tortoise was uh, given to me by my buddy Lonnie McCaskill. Somebody actually gave him to the zoo Lonnie was working at. So uh, you'll notice some of the animals have a little bit more pyramiding and others don't. Now, pyramiding, as we know, uh, if it gets really bad, it can lead to metabolic bone disease. But I don't mind a little bit of pyramiding is going to happen in captivity. As long as it doesn't inhibit the animal's health or its mobility, then I really am not so crazy about it. Of course, we should aim for that really nice, smooth shell growth. But hey, no one's perfect. And variety is the spice of life. So now I want to show you my Greek maniacs, the Greek tortoises, uh, and they cohabitate with my rhino iguanas. Uh, so there's Petro and Petra. Uh, and then I want you to see these Greek tortoises. Watch this one in particular. This is the most murderous creature. Look, look, it's a maniac. Look at this crazy tortoise. I come in here with sandals, and man, this tortoise goes nuts. It thinks I have food. Yeah, it's crazy. What's going on? It's a little Greek tortoise that is just insane. Oh, you're not so big and bad now, are you? That is the most aggressive animal I have at Camp Kennan. Right there. Actually, this one would give Slinky a run for her money. Guaranteed. Anyhow, this one's always hungry and never full. And there goes my, my rhino. Uh, you can tell it's the male because it's got the bulge at the base of the tails. That's the hemipenes or tucked away nicely there and uh the gal let's go see if the female is in her heated shelter because remember what i said it's cold today um and this is kind of cool this is one of my favorite shelters to be perfectly honest because i spent so much time decorating it and putting a roof on it and i don't know sometimes i get inspired and i um i'm not a carpenter 
I'm actually terrible, <laughs> but I, uh, if, I, if I slow down and take my time, sometimes I can be creative. You know, like I did just a little bamboo on the outside. I lifted it off the ground and I mean, simple things, guys. I mean, you can get as fun as you want to with these animals and habitats. Um, so here we go. Let's see. Oh, there she is. There she is. Let's see. Now these guys are not like Lola and um, they're not really as handleable as Lola and Guapo, but they are beautiful. And these are young adults. She has laid eggs and I have a little guy inside. His name is Little Dave and it's one of their offspring. But this, this is a nice animal. They really have that look of stone, you know, the rock iguanas. This is the, the rhinoceros iguana. It's of the rock iguana family of Cyclora. It's a young adult, but this is just a cool animal. Um, and again, lots of space, lots of room to move, lots of space to be a lizard. If you're gonna keep an animal, you have to give it what it needs to thrive. So you can see a full range of the animal's behaviors. And that's what I really enjoy about building things down here in Florida. Pretty cool, huh? So I can shut this little door that I have in there and um, we have a nice heat pad mounted to the wall. So as they get cool, they move closer to the wall. As they get too warm, they just move away. You still give them an option to thermoregulate. We're gonna shut this, you ready? Here we go. All right, guys. Now let's move on and go see some of the mountain tortoise. So I love it in this area because it's such a perfect spot for the species that inhabits it, and that is the mountain tortoise and elongated tortoise. So this is why I love it. I'll rake up the, the leaves that fall onto the driveway and I dump them right over here for two reasons. One, it's cold, right? So this species is actually quite cold tolerant. They can live at altitude. So we've got the mountain tortoise burrowed in, but we also have two elongated tortoise right here. It's kind of like a little, it's almost like a tortoise minefield uh, because you have to be careful. And look at this, here's a really cool thing to notice. You see how moist it is? That's what we're talking about, about microclimates. If you keep uh, baby tortoises, microclimates are so important for a tortoise. Right out here, it's very dry, but burrowed in, it's still humid. So these animals know what they need to do to make use of those microclimates. So let's go ahead and cover them back up because we do have a chill. Again, I have large mango trees. The tortoises wait for the mangoes to fall. They eat them, it's really spectacular. If we get real cold, like in the 30s, that's when I utilize the shed here. It's very simple, if I have to, I'll lock them in. We have one of the animals moving now. In fact, this is my buddy Lonnie McCaskill's female Burmese brown mountain tortoise. Uh, this is cool. So I'll be babysitting her for a little while, but look at how pretty she is. This is the brown, not the black. And you would tell the difference. I'm gonna show you guys real quick right here. How to tell the difference between a Burmese brown mountain tortoise and a black. Here I have the Burmese black mountain tortoise. You see these scoots right here? Those are called the pectoral scoots, okay? Like pecs. They got some good pecs. But these meet at the center line of the plastron, the bottom of the tortoise's shell. Now, that's how you tell the difference between a black mountain tortoise. Let me show you what a brown looks like. Oh, she's a bit bigger. Okay, so check her out. Look at her pectoral scoots. They have a line. They don't meet at the center line. That's it. That's the difference. It's just this pectoral scoots. Pretty cool, huh? Now you know between the difference between a brown mountain tortoise and a black mountain tortoise and a black mountain tortoise right there. Look, let's get out of here. That's chompers, man. That's a slow methodical tortoise attack. Let's go. Well, no tour to Camp Kennan would be complete without the three wise men. We got Nostradamus, Socrates, and Darwin. And I love these animals. Uh, they are fantastic. They've got a nice big enclosure. They got their heated shelters. They got their summer retreat that I open up when temperatures are warm. And right now, Socrates is just kind of investigating me uh, because usually I have a cactus treat for them, but uh, not the case today. But anyhow, there's a lot going on here at Camp Kennan. Plenty of animals, enough to keep me busy. Uh, and again, I've said it before in previous videos. It's not about how many animals you have. It's about the quality of life you can provide for the animals. And this is enough to keep me busy, but I uh, don't mind being busy as long as it keeps them happy.
So I hope you enjoyed this little tour. We'll do another one as the menagerie uh, grows and we build new enclosures. Don't forget I also have red foots and yellow foots. If you want to see more of them, you can follow me on Facebook. You can also follow me on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos from Camp Kennett. See you later.